actual serious tier list stream. Okay. Hopefully I didn't mess anything up in the settings. I'm gonna objectively raid every single Toho say so tensive character. Late test stream, yes. Very late. I don't usually stream this late, but I didn't do Soku Saturday last week. You know, I wanna keep wanna make up for it by with a bonus stream, so. Here you go. This is the, your bonus. This is the bonus stream. I'm making a tier list. For real, for real. Okay. So, um, I think my tiers are gonna be like this. I'm gonna go from. I don't know if the top tier is S. I think S makes... Uh, okay, I'll go from S to B. I don't think any character in this game is worse than, like, an 8. Or even, like, at worst, a 7 out of 10. Like, everyone's pretty good. Anyways. Since... I got the characters here in alphabetical order. I'm just gonna go like that. It'll be interesting. Okay, so. First up, Alice. I... I got a lot of respect for Alice, okay? Alice is not an easy character to play. You know? But she does have some good points, right? She does pretty good damage. She has... Really good melee zoning. Like, the best far A in the game. You have to respect it. 6-6-A is annoying to deal with as well. And, you know, when she gets going, she she looks, like, awesome. Like, it's one of the most impressive characters to be at a high level. But at the same time, this character is very flawed. You know, defense, obviously, not very good. Pressure can be a little lacking, you know. Takes a lot of effort to get Oki on this character. And, you know, a lot of characters can just kind of get into her before she can really get anything going. But, so I'm like, this character is good, but there's just so many other characters that do just as well with significantly less effort and having significantly less drawbacks. So, I, in my opinion, Alice, not, like, not top 10 character, like, she's definitely in the bottom 10, but not, like, not, like, in the worst of the worst tier. As in, like, even though the worst tier is, like, B, I, I still think Alice is, like, above that. Where I would say, I would put Alice in B+, plus, right? I think that's fair. She also has she also has some pretty good matchups against certain characters. Like you go you put Alice against like an Oku. Oku is just like suffering. I feel like Alice also does pretty good against Romilia, all things considered, even though Romilia like gets in and bullies Alice, like, Romilia actually has a pretty hard time getting on an Alice compared to other characters, because she has really meaty J6As, and those meaty hitboxes kind of like, you know, what Remy doesn't like. So, I mean, yeah. That, that's my Alice evaluation. He's a B-plus, but you know, like, a B-plus, but like, you, you you can do well with this character. <laughs> I don't think Remy has any issues with Alice.
I mean, I remember stories of like, I, it's like one of those matchups where everyone hates it, you know, <laughs> where everyone's like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't want to play Alice. It's like, oh, I don't want to play against Remy, you know. I don't think there's anyone that would, now that I think of it, I don't think there's any character that like, actually likes the Alice matchup now that I think about it. Maybe like, maybe, maybe I, I don't know. Alice can be annoying to fight. Doesn't matter who you're using. Because there's always things about this character that you have to consider, and you have to change your matchup against it. Where it's like... You know. That's why I think, that's why I think Alice is... Even though she's got really bad flaws, she has enough good points where it's like, you have to respect certain things about this match. Okay. So, um, next alphabetical order, obviously, is Aya. You know me, I'm very, very enthusiastic about Aya. I think she's one of the top five characters, top five-ish in the game. Like, you know... This character pretty much has uh, almost one of the most complete sets in Soku, you know. She's got amazing movement, great pressure, good set of bullets for, you know, poking at people and being defensive. And also just has the authority to just go in and kind of exert herself. She's got amazing spells. She's got, you know... Almost everything you'd want in a character besides damage. That's definitely the downfall of Aya traditionally. She's a character that takes lo that's low damage, so that means you have to hit the other guy a lot of times to win a game, which can definitely come to bite you against characters that do a lot of damage, like, say, Oku, or even like a Marisa, or just like a Yuyuko, or where it's just like, or a Yomu. Like, there are definitely a lot of characters that where you if, if you're playing Aya you get you can be winning like the whole game and then they get out once and then you lose momentum and then it swings hard enough where it's just like all that effort is just immediately neutralized then I mean, so I mean that doesn't make Aya bad though like Aya definitely has the ability to also make crazy comebacks because you know she has amazing meter it's Just, you know, I definitely has more upsides than downsides by a long shot. It's one of the, the one of easily one of the best characters in the game, for obvious reasons. Well, not obvious. Well, I already I already explained why I think I is very good. So, my uh, I would say Aya is a plus. I don't think she's S tier because. There are characters that kind of are cheaper, I would say. Like, Aya is good because, I mean, if you play good with Aya, you know, you, you're doing well. But there's not, like, any aspect of Aya that's, like, absurdly, like, out there. Like, outright, like, dumb, stupid. It's kind of like, you know, she's good, like, honest good. It's like a fair good. You know. <laughs> how is being cheap a criteria for being chopped here? That's always how it is, man. The cheapest characters always go in S. That's what that's what S is for. You gotta have you gotta have a lot of freaking dirt. Aya has some dirt, but I mean there's some there's some cheeky cross-ups in there, but, you know, there's not, like, dirt, dirt, like, where it outright just freaking turns a loss into a win kind of dirt, you know? I just like that character, like, I feel like Aya doesn't, can't really carry you. Like, if you're not better than your opponent, you're not going to cheese out wins with Aya. That's why I'm like, that's what, that's what keeps her out of S to me. Okay. 
Um, next, we got Cherno. So, I, I am honestly a fan of Cherno. I think Cherno is underrated by the Soka community at large. Like, he has probably one of, if not the best, J5As in the game. That 5C is legendary for just annoying the shit out of everyone that plays this against this character. She has pretty decent conversion ability. She's got a pretty solid amount spell selection, you know. All that you All that of course comes with like the obvious weaknesses. Like she has really shit bullets outside of 5C. Like there's almost no threat about this from this character. from full screen, it's like, you know, Cherno, you have to go in. And that's a definite weakness in a game where, you know, everyone's got some bullets and, you know, Cherno just, just, just doesn't have a B button. <laughs> it just doesn't exist. <laughs> they gotta think about that. Also, she kind of suffers against certain characters, like Yuko matchup, famously bad. Yomu, definitely gives Cherno a very hard time because <laughs> just shit does not work on her. <laughs> um, stuff like that. So, I mean, this character d does take a lot of work to make work. Like, um... But, I mean, it definitely rewards effort. I mean, you're not gonna... Hmm... Oh, then again, I mean, I guess Cherno, you, you'll, she does have a, I feel like she does have, like, a certain ceiling. J5A is very slow and small. What? <laughs> That's a lie. J Cherno's J5A is one of the most disjointed J5As in this game, bro. <laughs> I think it's longer than, it's, 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 it's kind of ridiculous how far the... The aura of her arm is on J5A. It just goes so... It's kind of... It's kind of dumb. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a good button. It's a very good button. This this character is... Kind of kind of strong. Is Has very strong aspects about her. But also very weak aspects. I would... Say, hmm. I would say B plus, but I don't know. I feel like B plus might be too high for Cherno. I I like her, but there's also so many characters that just do Cherno, but better. You know. <laughs> Like, if you want it to be fast, there are other fast characters that do Cherno's job better than Cherno does. As, like, a pure, like, offensive, like, rushdown character. Like, you have... Characters that have similar speed and power, but also have don't have the, nearly as many downsides. So it's like, it's hard for Cherno to like, stand out, or like, you know, like... I mean, I guess being overshadowed doesn't mean equal bad. Then again, like, B isn't bad. B plus isn't bad either. I will stick with... B plus for now, but I might lower her. Depends. Okay. Next is Hong Mei Ling. She is in alphabetic order. It's Hong, so she's before Iku instead of after. I am a 
Mei Ling enthusiast. I've been saying this about like every character so far, but I actually re think Mei Ling is a really strong character. Like, I remember in the beginning days of this game, people were thinking that Mei Ling was around like B, B plus tier, but I think that Mei Ling is actually a like, top 10. Like, there's so many good things with this character that it's kind of insane the, the amount of tools this character has with her uh, great movement, great pressure, amazing backdash, just moves around the screen with such ease, blocks pretty much every bullet in the mid-range while she just goes in, bullies you with a giant J2A, long-reaching jump 5A, you know. Some of the greatest pressure in this game, some amazing damage when you can manage to, when you learn all the hit confirms. It's just like, so many upsides to playing Mei Ling that I don't know how people were sleeping on this character for so long. After, I've seen players like Saber or um, Sand, you know, the, all these, or D.O.P. They've been bringing, they've been pushing Mei Ling to like the highest level and she's been like, she's thriving. But of course, like, you know, there is definitely some parts to her that aren't as good. Like, she, I don't think, I definitely think Aya is better than Mei Ling. Like, that's no question. Mei Ling is very good, but there, de there are definitely characters that give her a hard time, like Yuko, where you just can't block her shit. And, uh, you know, it's sometimes when 5C doesn't get it done, you just don't feel like you got a lot of tools. It's like, you know, but it's not like they're bad tools, but when she doesn't have a lot of tools, it's like you have a very, you have a few good things that are very good, but if they don't work, you're just not, you're stuck with a lot of S stuff, you know? So, in my opinion, I would say Mei Ling, A tier character. A. A is right in the middle, precipice of being top tier, but not quite top tier, you know. Just, just, uh... I guess if you're gonna call it, this is like, upper mid tier. But, um, yeah. That's what I think about Mei Ling. She's gatekeeping the the people below her from getting into hot top tier. She's like right at the edge of being a a great character. But instead she only ends up being good, you know. <laughs> okay. Next is Iku. Okay. You know me, I hate Iku. I think Iku is one of the best characters in the game. I think she's like top two. Okay, I mean, his character, you know how I was talking about I earlier, I said Aya didn't have cheese, so she wasn't S tier to me? Iku definitely has cheese. <laughs> Iku has so much cheese. <laughs> She's got pretty, like you would look at her list on at her base kit, and it's just like, oh yeah, Fear's got a good point about Mei Ling. I'll get back to her at the end, but yeah, like, Mei Ling isn't as versatile as Aya. Like, definitely doesn't have the amount of ways she can play neutral as Aya. Like, she's more, more, more funneled into certain areas, more funneled into certain ways of approaching and playing the game. Meanwhile, Aya can do more things from, like, from f more further ranges, and she's got more, she's got more pressure options and stuff, you know. Well, not more pressure options, more like neutral options, I mean, sorry. <laughs> like, for example, like, Aya can try to move and hit people with, like, various air moves. She has a jump 5A, jump, and a jump 8A, and they basically cover almost everything together. But, you know, Mei Ling doesn't have a jump 8A. That move doesn't exist. <laughs> so, that, also, that means you're limited in how you can go 
and approach people that are going above you, right? Because, you know, you just don't have that move. <laughs> etc, etc. Anyways, on to back to Iku. Iku is S tier to me. Why do I think Iku is S tier? Okay, well, you know. As I was saying, when you look at this character's like base kit, you think there's a lot of like good things, but nothing would really like stick out to you like, oh, this character is good. Like, but when you start looking at what she does with meter, then this character, that's what brings this character from an A plus to an S. Like, you have godlike spells. Almost. Everything she does with Meteor just completely turns the game on its head. She has some crazy alts in there. Like, we can start with the alts. Like, she has some alts that just change how she can pressure. She can turn herself into a mini racing with the freaking electric drill, which does crazy chip and is plus on high jump. Is really plus on high jump. You have the dragons, the freaking spinner bar that covers the entire screen and just locks out characters from existing. You have some really great Oki skills with the freaking lightning bolt, delay bolt, and you got disco step that can create plus frames out of nothing. It's just like... So versatile. And so strong. Like, you got a, you got so many strong and good options. Like, every character has a lot of options, but most of them are just the bad. But Iku just has everything, and they're all good. And that's just ults. Then you move on to her spells, and then that's where the real... That's where the real cheese starts coming in, right? You have Lightning Armor, which basically guarantees a crush. In almost every situation it's used, you have... The best card in the game, pretty much, in Veils Like Sky, which gets Iku out of jail for free. And then she gets to win neutral for for, for basically the next 10 seconds. Where, where all you can do is basically run away or try to play one-sided Spring Haze games. And then she also has Swimming Orpheus Shot, which does a ton of damage and gives Oki. Which also ends up doing all, which can lead to even more crushes. Like, you can take like 3k or more and then get crushed into taking another 2k from the chip and the, and the damage of the combo that she gets after it. It's just so many good aspects in one character that just does everything. She just does everything, you know? She is a zoner with pressure she has a she might have bad defense but at the same time when you when this character border escapes you just have to respect her in the air because her j2a is like oh you can't come up from under this character because you'll just get slammed and then even when that doesn't work you always have the meter that four card that gets out of pressure lasts forever may stays between rounds in just lets her punish things that should not be punishable. It's kind of... Kinda, it's kinda wild. A key disadvantage for Iku, I mean, she's slow. That's about it. <laughs> like, you're playing a character that's not very good lateral movement. But at the end of the day... If they'd ever touch you, why would you need to move in the first place? <laughs> oh yeah, and also her pokes are bad. 5A can be low profile. But it's okay because she has like the best 2A in the game. <laughs> even though it's slow, it stays forever and even anti-airs. Also. She just, uh, you know, there's things you you might struggle with Iku when people get into her face with every, like, well, that's by the design, right? She's a zoner. But at the same time, you know, she's got ways to mitigate her. She's got 
a lot of ways to mitigate her weaknesses and her advantage state or like not advantage state but rather when she's going it's kind of ridiculous how fast you can just lose hp it's 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 a good character very good character And like right when you think you got her, it's like she's got a second HP bar. She pops out veils like sky, and now you just have to. And then it's just her turn. Wild. Okay. Now another character that I'm very passionate about is Komachi next. So. What? <laughs> Everyone wants to know my opinion about Komachi, right? So, I I I actually really enjoy playing Komachi, right? She is a fun character. There are definitely some aspects of her that are not fun sometimes, but there are some things about her that no other character can do, which I think does have some there's some there's some things to point out like okay like Komachi has that amazing down forward air dash you know that gives her mix-up ability and you know ability to escape from pressure situations that no other character can escape from just by jumping and forward being is just like okay I'm out of here you know you have amazing pressure strings that can you just keep people in jail forever by using jump 5a with the air dash, you can reset a lot of times with her. It's like, you know, those are definitely some good aspects. But at the same time, her weaknesses are super apparent and pretty exploitable. Like, you know, everyone knows full well that she's got, like, one of the... Hardest times getting wrong blocks in this game because her 3A is pretty not functional in the, as a pressure move unless you space it specifically. You've got the J6A, which should be a good move, but has a unfortunate blind spot in front of her. So it just doesn't always work the way you think it should. It can also get low profiled. She has got really sad bullet coverage where... Her best bullet in neutral is like B1, but characters can do like B6 by pressing one button in this game. <laughs> so it's like, sometimes if she's not, so she's got, in a way, she's got even worse full screen presence than characters like, like Yomu or Chirino, where it's like these characters are fast at least, but they, to get around their like, Maybe not having bullets, but it's like, Komachi does not have bullets, and she's also not that fast. And she's also got a pretty... She's on the larger side of hitboxes. So, you know. There's definitely a lot of downsides there. But she's also kind of... She's got a, she's got a lot of versatility in this kit, also. I mean... Her ult skills are really good. She's got... An amazing 236 that can chant that can, you know, give her a lot of mix-ups. She's got the she's got good Oki with that 2-2. Two -two. She's got a really good three card. She's got really good taste of death. But also at the end of the day, those are all art. Those are all arts. At the, that's a legitimate weakness in this game. When your base kit is as bad as Komachi's, you have to be you're super reliant on getting your shit up early. And, you know, it, consistency issues are are pretty big. Like, if you're not always at your best, you know, you could definitely, there's definitely some times where you're just playing around and you just, your shit isn't there and you're just, you're just suffering because your base kit is just so, you have a two, your 2-2 two -two doesn't work. Your 6-2-3 <laughs> is okay, but it's only purely for Oki because it doesn't do, they took away the hitbox. The 236 is solid, but it's not gonna do anything from full screen. It's just basically a pressure bullet and maybe a cheeky poke. And you got a legitimately good 2 and 4. But again, it's only B3, and, uh, and there are characters that do like B6 and one attack. <laughs> 
So, I mean, there are definitely some times where you just, you suffer. There, this character, Kawachi also has, like, really, really, like, bad matchups. Where it's just, like, you just can't... Where you would be better off playing another character. <laughs> That's just my opinion, though. I mean, it's not that bad, but... Damn. So, sometimes it's just kind of sad. Also, you, Kawachi is low-ish damage. Not really... Not all of her hits can really convert. And... You know, it's just... You know, this character has, is, is really close to being a good character. Really, really close to being, like... She's just a few changes away from being up here. But, you know, the nerfs... She, you know, some people say that Komachi feels like playing a nerfed character, you know? And they're definitely right in that Komachi was, like... Nerfed a lot. In, in, like, past versions of the game. So... You know, she's definitely one of the weaker characters in Sophie. There's no two ways around it. So, okay. I'm gonna put Komachi in B for now, but I might move her up. It depends. Okay. Next character, Marisa. Everyone knows Marisa. <laughs> Marisa is the quintessential high mid character. You know, she's just so well balanced, has an option for everything, almost every situation in this game. You've got great movement, solid bullet set, including one that just turns up enemy's bullets into your danger zone. You've got a DP, so even though it's not a good DP, you have a DP. This is the first character with the DP that I'm rating. Also, he says amazing damage. Probably some of the best reward in this game when you can mass when you get like really good with this character. But the thing of Risa is deceptively difficult to play at a high level. For one thing, her conversion game is way complicated. Like abnormally hard for a character people call a beginning like starting point like Arisa has it's very hard to consistently get knockdowns with this character sometimes especially in doing like good damage you have to actually have some really good good execution on this character so like a lot of Marisa will like hit the ceiling where it's like this character isn't very good well, not very, isn't not that they are very aren't very good. It's just that they aren't like you know, extremely um, extremely like um, competitive. Like like an okay Marisa player is like over here, but then like you have like a godlike Marisa player. They can sometimes make her seem like she's up here. So like, I could say you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is my placement for Risa right there. <laughs> you know. You know, it's just super solid. But, you know, there's just not a... But, you know, it's overall kind of honest. Super honest character. But honest good character. But not honest as good as Aya, you know. Not... <laughs> also doesn't have a lot of, um... Doesn't have a lot of, um, what's the word for it? Oh, well, I guess she does have sauce. She does have sauce. It's nothing like he's gonna... 
she's not gonna cheese. Well, she's gonna. Well, she's got some cheesy stuff. It's like you know, deceptively honest. <laughs> That's what I think. That's that's my reason placement for now. Risa is definitely top ten, but you know there I can there's definitely like lower end of top ten, like seven to ten range of top ten, not like five five plus five or less. But yeah, I'll come. I might come back to Marisa, but I think she's a very solid character. Has great tools, decent damage, but kind of wonky conversion game. Her pressure is also limited. I forgot to mention that. Like Marisa, pressure is really hard to make work because you don't have a six A half the time. Because unless you are using certain alts or spacing it very well, so you're kind of flowcharty when it comes to offense. You have to rely on catching escapes from your stuff a lot, or trying to guess when they're going to wrong block with 6C. Also, I agree. When you're talking about when I'm going on the sc the t scaling of this tier list, I don't. I also don't think there are any C or D tier characters in this game. The worst characters in this game are B. If you ask me, there is no character that's like legitimate. Like C is like you know seven out of ish out of ten, where it's like I don't think any character is that bad. I don't think there's a lot of division between tiers also. That's why I have like A and then A plus and B and then B plus. Because that's what I think. It's like there's not a lot of difference between the tiers where it's like you there's a, necess there's a necessity for a C tier. Like Iku is not so much better than the worst character in the game that she's S and then the other character in that bottom tier is C. Okay. Moving on past Marisa, we have Patchouli. Patchouli is a character that I have been convinced of the power of recently. You know, a few years back, I would say this character is like down here, but honestly, I think Patchouli has earned an A tier in my. In, in the year 2022. I think this character has a lot. I I have not been giving this character enough credit. It's like... She has... Some of the best punish tools in this game. Like, that 6-6-B is legitimately... The destroyer of a lot of things that would be safe. It's just like 6-6-B. No, you're not safe, you know. You have some strings that almost always force a BE out of you, where it's just like, Patchouli can checkmate you really quickly. Like, sometimes where it's just like, Patchy gets in on you, and before you know it, it's just like, oh, I'm crushed because I didn't decide to BE on the first move I blocked. She's got... A really diverse kit of bullets, obviously, where it's just like, there's always an answer for uh, every approach with Patchouli. And... Even though she's a zoner, she's got deceptively good defensive options. Where it's just like, her wake up is super good, her backdash is among the best in the game, She's got the fastest air bullet in the game, so she can bust out of air block strings really easily by just hitting the ju just by hitting the C button. It's there's just so much about this character that kind of just changes the game around her. Where it's just like you, if you don't know how to fight Patchouli, or you just 
straight up have a bad matchup against Patchouli. This character just seems absolutely busted sometimes. <laughs> but then, you know, you come to the other side of the coin where Patchouli just has some really shit matchups. <laughs> and some times where she just can't really get going. Where it's just like, you know, you have a character like Salkia, which just kind of invalidates Patchouli's existence have characters like Yom, <laughs> which is like zoom into Patchy's face and then she presses jump A and then it's just like wow man what do I do I just can't play the game <laughs> also um you also have to deal with the fact that with Patchouli you're just not going to have What's the word I'm saying? I'm trying to... Hmm. Like, what can I say? You're not gonna have, like... That... Hmm. What can I say? I wanna say, like, like that X Factor, you know? But then again, like, Patchy can make some pretty good comebacks, can't she? Hmm. Okay. It's not... Okay. Now I know what I want to say. It's not Patchouli herself that suffers. It's just that... Some characters have ways to get around what Patchouli does. That's where it's just like, on paper, this shit from Patchouli seems absolutely crazy, like, unbeatable. But you consider what other characters can do, and then you can start to see that it's not as immediately good or not as super strong. Which is kind of what holds her back. It's not... Patchouli herself, it's what other characters do, can do against Patchouli stuff. Like, you have top tier, or you have characters like uh, Salkia, like Raisin, like Yukari, stuff like that, where it's just like, you know, even some of the characters below Patchouli have stuff to deal with Patchouli. So, you know, it's not, it's a, it's a pretty hard character to be consistent with because you have to be able to, you know, get around a lot of this junk that other characters are going to be throwing on you that just has advantages against the junk Patchouli has. So yeah, that's why I think that Patchouli is in. on the verge of top 10. She's top 10-ish. It's like... Nine, nine or tenth place for me. Okay, so next is Reimu. Reimu is a character that's been fr has been falling, sliding down everyone's tier lists for a while now. Like, I re I remember when I first started playing this game, people were thinking that she's up here in A fringe top 10 character but a lot of people are so down on her now that they would put her in B and you know I I don't think Reimu is that good personally like I don't she's definitely not top 10 like this character is pretty limited in a lot of ways where it's like, you know, you have obviously the slow movement, the kind of speared hungry neutral where it's like you're always throwing stuff so you're easy to, <laughs> if you, you get, it's easy to get caught in a bad spot where you're just kind of drained yourself and you get crushed. You don't have a good low because your 3A is also a high. Although Rainbow's 3A is... Some of the... It's one of the best anti-airs in this game. 
you've got some pretty lame-ish moves, like her jump 5A is a lot worse than it probably should be. Her, um... I already talked about the pressure, too. Hmm. You know, it's hard, though, because honestly, Reimu does have, like, a lot of a pretty, like, has a lot of good, well, decent stuff. Like, there's not a lot of things in Reimu's kit that's outright bad. It's just that a lot of it is just kind of eh, you know? Lots of mediocre stuff outside of, like, 5C. Jump 8A, like, those are legitimately good. Her dash attacks are also really good. Like, 66A and 66C are really strong moves. But then you have, like, the rest of it is just, like, kind of okay to eh. Oh, yeah, her damage is also pretty solid in when she gets in her good situations. Like, she can just really make you pay for for when you, she op if she can open you up. Which is admittedly pretty hard with Reimu, because she just does not have good pressure strings. And also, like, she has hard a time chasing wake-ups, because, you know, she's just really slow. So, I mean, she's definitely on the weaker side. Definitely, it, definitely not as good as Patchouli, Marisa, or, or Yon. She is like, either B plus or B. I, when it comes to whether I think Komachi is better than Reimu, hard to say, because I think that, uh, I want to say that like Reimu is better than Chirno. But I think that oh, hmm. Do I think that Rain was better than Chirno? Actually, I don't know anymore. Do I think Rain was better than Komachi? I think Rain definitely has. Hmm. Let's see here. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely putting Cherno too high. Because Cherno... Oh shit, I don't know. Because I'm pretty high on Cherno. I think she's underrated. But I also think that Reimu is on the same level as Cherno. Do I think Komachi is better than Reimu? It's hard to say. I think Komachi has higher highs, but low in lower lows than Reimu. <laughs> but Reimu is just kind of a lot of like eh matchups or like slightly bad matchups, but not a lot of good matchups. Or, or it's like Komachi has more good stuff about her. But also, her bad stuff is worse. It's hard. She, it's hard to put her between B and B+. Okay, I'm gonna put her in B for now, but... Uh, it, I, I might go back through once I get through every other character. You know, also one thing that I should point out about about Reimu is that all this shit takes a lot of investment for some reason. Where it's like default her um her 236 series other than Yokai Buster, you want like high levels on, like Hakure Amulet and um Spread Amulet need like level three. Her DP needs like level four before it actually works as a DP for her 214 screen is kind of shit unless you level it. it. It's, uh... She is 
unnecessarily dependent on either alts or leveling stuff up, which is a it's just a pretty bad weakness. Which was which is that which is all another thing. That's just what I also said about like um. Probably change my chat color to uh, freaking black <laughs> so you can see it over the white. Oh, I'll do it later. But yeah. Yeah, this is, this is, I think that's a good spot for Eber for now. Moving on to racing. Okay, so. Everyone knows about Raisin. He is one of the most... Ob I was about to say obnoxious. Solid characters. <laughs> one of the the, the more uh, well-rounded characters. Where it's like, you know... There's almost nothing bad in this kid. Raisin is just kind of all-around strong. Like, her neutral, amazing. Her pressure, some of the best meterless pressure in the game. Great chip damage, great frame data, great catches on border escapes, just built into the kit. Everything converts into damage. She's got amazing crush confirms. She's got great spell card damage. She just has great versatility. You know, a lot of ways to cheese her way out of situations by virtue of small size or just just having a crazy specific answer to things like you can just default 623 to avoid stuff like Oku Visor you can use her alt 623 to get Oki without putting yourself at risk to reversals you can cross up from almost any knockdown with her 6A where you just kind of create vortex situations in a game where usually that's not possible. It's just like, you know, you have this character with just probably one of, if not the best offenses in the game. But then, at the same time, you have some of the most exploitable defense in this game, where Raisin has so much trouble when she gets knocked down because she just has the worst tech roll in the game. Slow, slow as shit, doesn't even escape the corner. So it's like, you can get in on Raisin and if she doesn't have a bomb or a hangeki or even a coin, you, you just can kind of get really crazy comebacks on this character. <laughs> so it's like... Dang. <laughs> when she's... When Raisin's going, she's... freaking crazy. There's just nothing else like it. But when you get... a knockdown on, Ray, on Raisin, she just... You can you can kind of turn it around with almost any character in this game, and I've seen it happen so many times, where like Blaze is winning, he's and then you knock down Blaze, and then he's like, "Fuck, <laughs> he dies." <laughs> but sometimes Blaze just never gets hit because Race's neutral is just so freaking godlike, where it's just like you can't get in. Just locks you out the entire game. But then I've seen those games where he's winning against Kama for like 90% of the match. And then... Kama gets that knockdown and then Blaze just can't get back into the game, you know. Because he just loses so much. <laughs> So yeah. Originally, I would 
say that Raisin's like an S tier character held back by her really, really shit defense where you can just die. But is her good bullshit enough to keep her out of A plus is the question where it's like, is this enough to gatekeep her from the S tier or is she actually just S tier and that weakness doesn't matter as much as I think it does. Because... Iku has... A pretty lame defense, but she always has a weight. But when she has Veil, it kind of just turns defense on its head, you know. Racing can't do that. Okay, yeah. 2C is pretty good. 2C is pretty good at getting people off of you and poking out of shit. You're right. But... <laughs> you get a knockdown on racing. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, it's just that, that, that shit where you can kill racing really fast just makes me second guess putting her in S, you know. Iku loses. I think she has to be S. Oh my gosh, it's hard. It's really hard. Yeah, she's not very reliant. She's a very consistent character. But again, so all of the S tier characters are consistent. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll leave her an S for now, but might move her down later. Okay, next character, Vermilia. Vermilia is... Pretty damn strong, I'll say that. She has by far the best defense in the game, where you can just kind of get out of pressure with this character for free, and there's not much a lot of characters can do about it. <laughs> you know, she just kind of, she can like chicken block and forward B, and then it's like, what do you do about it? She just teleports through you to the middle of the screen, and you know, she is gone. And, you know, she has amazing Abare, she has crazy good two-way for just mashing out of shit she's got. Oh, man, this game. Uh, sorry about the disconnect. Uh, can we just get our game? Okay, and it should be back up shortly. Hello? Stream? At least I'm still recording, so I'm not going to lose any of this, but please. I'll just uh, give it a view. My music stopped too, so... Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. Okay. Back to Remilia. I think Remilia is a very strong character. Like I said, she's got really dumb defensive tools. Really solid offensive tools. But, this character is a little bit too linear sometimes. 
she has to be close to people. She has to get in there. She has to put herself at a lot of risk. That's the thing about Amelia. She's inherently risky. Because you are... Constantly throwing yourself into the opponent's face and trying to hit them out of things. And, you know... That holds her back. Like, that's a legitimate weakness, where it's just like... You gotta play balls to the wall with this character. <laughs> but her reward is amazing. Like, you've got great pressure when you when it works out. Hiroki is solid, she can cross up really easily, and she's got one of the best four cards in this game where Gungner can turn, like, even, like, bad block strings into guaranteed crushes. And, you know, she's got that shit where she can turn any hit into 4k or even 5k damage sometimes with uh, Dracula Cradle. Not Dracula Cradle, um... Is that Dracula? Yeah, Dracula Cradle. I'm sorry. And, you know, she's got some of the best reversals. She's got the best DP in the game, bar none. Easily the best DP. And, you know, that five card reversal she's got also can checkmate you when you're pressuring her. If you go too low, if you go too hard on spear and bullet attacks while pressuring Remy, and she has Scarlet Devil, you can just break, you just, you can just fuck yourself over. So, like, yeah. This, Remy's got all of the aspects of a very good character, but not a broken character, you know. Because her bullets are so limited, she had, like, it, it feeds into her having to just play super risky all the time. Where it's like, it's hard, and it's like, and if you are just, guess, if you're not making right plays, you can just. You know, throw yourself into da danger and just die a lot, you know. So, yeah, this is definitely an A plus tier character. Not S. The other char the characters that are above her are definitely way more consistent than Remilia. Remilia, good. Remilia, strong. Re even strong. More than good. But, you know, just not the best you can do in this game. Also, I mean, Chain Gang is good. Is her best full screen option. But it's also super risky. <laughs> it's not It's not very reliable as a thing you can just throw out there and try to w go behind. And, you know, turn neutral around, you know. You get your chain gang grace, you're just sitting there for five seconds. <laughs> but yeah. That's that's Remilia. That's my evaluation of Remilia. Okay. Next up on the list, Sophia. Okay, so Sophia is another character whose opinion has slightly fallen over the years. Back when this game was younger, Sophia was an easily easy shoe in for top, but for S tier. But I think people have started to, uh, you know, figure out character has weaknesses it's very similar to Raisin in that you know her tech is extremely exploitable like super super exploitable to the point where she dies almost as bad as she does when she gets knocked down but she does get up a bit faster so it's not as one-sided against her but that's a legitimate knock against her she also you know doesn't have really good meterless pressure and her oki without her meter cards isn't super scary 
where you have a character like Raisin, who is always scary when she gets a knockdown. Sakia is super scary when she has her cards, but when she doesn't have her cards, it's kind of, you know, eh, you know. But still, Salkia has really amazing tools across the board. Her bullet game is amazing. 2B, probably the best anti-air in the game. Her 6C completely invalidates certain characters' entire kits. Her... J6A is probably the best J6A in the game. I don't think any character even comes close to what... They can do with that J6A and how much space it controls and how she can move behind it and just completely just make it ridiculously hard to get away from her sometimes. You know, her 5B, her jump B and jump C can go behind people and just make it ridiculously hard to just get in. She can just kind of go up to the top of the screen, hit jump C, and then you're... Options to get in on that is just really, really limited. Like, overall, this character is just super hard to break. And then on top of that, if she wants to go in and just be aggressive, she has the leeway to do that. Because her movement's good. She's deceptively fast. She's got a really good low profile on her dash. And her 623C is one of the best... Moves in the game, period. Just jump 623C just stops so much. So many anti air attempts in this game. Because the best anti air in this game are bullets. And Sakia can just fly in, fly down 623, and it just stuffs so much shit. It's so strong. So, like, Sakia is just so close. To being another S tier like Raisin, but she doesn't have the meterless Oki that Raisin does, and her damage is much, much worse than Raisin for sure. Her chip damage is not a, nowhere near as strong, and you don't have the meter that just. It, a capability to explode on people for like a million damage with meter like Raisin does. So, you know, she definitely has her strengths. Crazy neutral, great meterless, I mean, great metered Oki. The best metered Oki in the game, really. And then you have this. Great neutral tool. Uh, I said great neutral. Great green, new great. Her two best things: great neutral and her metered Oki. Those are just outstanding. But then you have the weak tech roll, the kind of limited pressure because her 3A is unreliable, and you have that pretty shit defense in terms of tech roll. So, even though her strong points are similar level to Raisin, she definitely does not have the overt, like, she def her weaknesses are a little bit more pronounced in terms of her, like, overall offensive game. So, I would put her in A+. Like, if her 3A was better at directly pressuring people, or if she had a better way to Oki people without meter, she would be an S tier character. But, you know, that just. Just missing that little bit of extra stuff. Thakia definitely more consistent than Romilia. But I think Romilia has higher highest than Sakia. Actually, I don't know if she has higher highest. It's more like Romilia doesn't suck. It's harder to, you know, stop Romilia when she gets going, I think.
No, that's not it either. Because Remili- Sakia is... When Sakia has her meter, she is just kind of bullshit. You just kind of have to let her play the game. I don't know. Hard to say if who is better between Sakia and Remy. Like, because they're both good in their own specific ways. But yeah, I'll put I'd say they're both about the same. <laughs> okay. Next character, Sanae. Sanae is a character that people have always kind of liked to dunk on. Even from the beginning, people have said she's a pretty bad low-tier character, but, you know, I think that Sana isn't as bad as people think. She definitely has more sauce than people give her credit. Like, she has really strong neutral tools. Like, her jump, C, jump to C is really hard to deal with for a lot of characters. She has her 623, which can basically stop you from just pressing any bullet move because you're always going to be looking for it. And then she also has her wind tunnel, which basically wins the screen for as long as it's out for against a lot of characters. So, I mean, the stuff is there. Also, she's got really deceptively good movement, where if you master Sanai movement, you can kind of do some crazy shit, like throw off some really low-to-the-ground aerials, set up the short hops, you can do some really nice cross-ups with her. And, you know, like, her pressure game is bad. Like, there's no doubt about how limited her pressure game is and how she has, like, no tight bullets. But at the same time, right, she can really do some shit with meter that can make up for those deficiencies. Especially with, like, Grey Thaumaturgy being possibly the best two card in the game. Next to, like, Killing Doll and how it just turns a standard pressure string into basically a checkmate. And then you have Wave Call spell the Day of the Sea Split, which is contender for best three card of the game because of how fast it is and how it can turn just a standard frame trap situation into like 3,000 damage or more. It's... That's some good shit. Like, there's a lot... There's a deceptive... Uh, not deceptively. There's a surprisingly high amount of good things in this kit. Also, Shanai has this thing where she can, like, get out of combos while she's if she gets hit while she's flying because this game is dumb and applies wind for the first frame she gets hit, so... Sometimes she just kind of gets out of stuff. So... I was really... I'm high on Sane. I think she's underrated. But, I mean, those weaknesses will always be there. Her pressure is still probably the worst by far, you're never going to be able to get around that no matter how good you are with movement and frame traps. You know, sometimes, and her reliance on her assist, 623s especially, means that you're going to be a really strong character for like 5 seconds, and then you're stuck on the, the level of a mortal for about 15 seconds. <laughs> it, can, uh, it can get kind of bad. And 
In another dimension, Sana's skills have no cooldown and she's the best character in the game. Yeah, but unfortunately that's not the world we live in. Also, having to choose between using 6C for pressure and then it taking your 623 off cool on cooldown because it both uses Kanako, that's really unfortunate for her also. So, San is like the definition of like putting all your eggs in one basket, right? You have. She has basically dumped her neutral, I mean, or dumped her pressure entirely, just focus on having amazing neutral. But, unfortunately, the neutral isn't so godlike that dumping pressure makes up for it. It just kind of... Because, it's again, it's tied to cooldowns. So, you just can't be that godlike char neutral character all the time. So, like, you know, like, Sane is arguably closer to being up here than people give her credit. But, you know, she is definitely not up there. That's for sure. She's either down here or down here. I think, I think she has potential to be up here. Depending on how much you master her movement. But I don't think anyone's really brought her that far yet. So, like, in reality, she's down here. In B. But, I mean, I feel like it's not out of the realm of possibility for someone to just show how... this destroy the world with Sana and, and show everyone that's like, Oh, damn, this character has the schmoofs. <laughs> But yeah, this this day is not today. The character is not that good yet. Okay, so next character is Suika. Suika is solid character she's got some good points about her that are very apparent for one her damage is outstanding like she's got some of the ri most ridiculous confirms in this game when she gets her good hits like you can be taking 3k or more and you know Sika isn't slow like, she's got a small hurt box, and she's got decent movement speed. So, unlike other high damage characters, where you're dumping your movement, she can maintain that damage, and, you know, not be freaking uh, a tank. On top of that, she's got really good neutral tools. Her, especially Spirit Bomb and Fire Oni are some of the best... Special moves in the game. Fire Oni at high level is basically wins neutral by itself. She's got a really good, deceptively good zoning game. Her J6A is really good at just getting people off of her in neutral. It has a huge hitbox and it moves her away, so it just basically guaranteed to make space. You know, just. Kind of throw that out there, and you're probably going to be safe. Well, so it's like... Suika's got some really good shit. If you watch Wakaba be like, damn, this character is freaking broken. And then you play this character, and you realize what Wakaba has to deal with. <laughs> For one, Suika's ground normals are really, really not good. Like, there's a lot of things that just don't really work. Like, far A, 
probably one of the shittiest parties in this game. Her 5A doesn't combo in her 6A, so you're just stuck with a 4A that doesn't always convert. <laughs> you have a really shit 6-6A, it just doesn't go very fast or far, so you can't really punish things that a lot of characters would have no trouble punishing. And, you know, her overall pressure game is really limited. Like, because her dial A is really l low on the cancel options, like dial A3 is only goes into spell. You can't skill cancel it like you can for, like, most characters. You are only limited to, like, one or two melee mix-ups. Well, three if you use 2B, but, like, it's like, you can't really push pressure very hard with this character. And also, like, you know, if you really want to crush orbs with Suica, it's really, really hard. This character probably has some of the hardest time getting actual crushes. Because, like, her 6B has a thing where... The first hit doesn't jail into the second hit. So you can BE the first hit, which does basically no spear damage, before it actually does the part that, you know, does the orb. So, you know, that's kind of, it's kind of eh, you know. You know, Suika is just... A character where she's got a lot of okay to good things, but there's also a lot of things that are just bad to non-functional, but those good things are good enough to where she could compete with the best characters in, this, in the game. So that's definitely a case for B+. I feel like she's close to A, but just not quite there, you know. Oh yeah, did I did they really just talk about Suiko without mentioning Atlas? The <laughs> Damn, it slipped my mind completely. But yeah, she does have the best five card reversal in the entire game. That's something you will always have to worry about when playing against Suiko. She just has, she can just hold Atlas and just become the best defensive character in the game because Atlas is freaking dumb. I don't think Suika is A tier. I think she's, I think there are 10 characters. I don't think, I think she's lacking it enough where it's like, you know, it's like on the high end of B+. Plus. <laughs> ah. Where it's like, I, I, I definitely think that these, the characters that are in A are better than Suika. Dang, this is, this is a controversial pick, huh? Suika for B+. These guys are the uh, chat's really high on Suika. Uh, maybe I'm just low on Suika. I don't know. I'll 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 look at this again. I might move her up, but my initial rating for her is gonna be B plus for now. Only six more characters to talk about. We're almost there. We're almost home. <laughs> I'm not placing Suika below Alice in Cherno. The characters are in alphabetical order within the tier. They're not ordered within the tier.
These characters are on the same level. I did not say that Suika is better than Alice. I said Suika and Alice are about equally viable. Okay, so. Next up, Swako. Swako. I also think, you know, I've played against some Swakos. Since I play Komachi, you know, my opinion about Swako is probably going to be higher than most. But. I don't think Sulaco is so terrible that she's unplayable, like people would like to complain. She has definitely got some sauce. There's a lot of dirt in this kit. There's good cross-ups, there's really dumb pressure strings with the 623. There's probably one of the dumbest zoning bullets with her default 2-2. You have some really good normals. You also have some ways to really be lame with flying around forever. And you have jump 8A to basically pressure and put on uh, offense in ways that no other character can really do. I mean, having a low that hits from in the air in itself is just inherently freaking dumb. Like, Swako has a lot of good things going for her. Like, crazy offense, some okay, okay zoning, and you have just, oh yeah, her defense is also really ridiculous. Lilypad backdash is the best reversal in the game. <laughs> I It's kind of dumb. How easily Slako can get out of things by getting onto Lilypad and then holding 4D, and you just kind of <laughs> just have to deal with it. <laughs> and also, Lilypad just straight up avoids a lot of moves too. It's kind of kind of wild what this character can do in close quarters. Like, if she's in on you, or you're in on her, she can make your life hard. But, if you don't want to interact with Swako, a lot of characters can just choose not to interact with this character. Because her chase ability is the worst in the entire game. She cannot fly forward. She only has two air dashes with limited range. Her forward dash is terrible. Her walk forward is terrible. It's just... You know... So limited and neutral with this character. But if you can get around that, you have a pretty solid time. I mean, you have a pretty solid character underneath all of that. So... Definitely, those aspects of Slako come together to a point where she's either B or B+. I would not put her in A. I think she's definitely got too many weaknesses to be up here. And some of her bad matchups are a little bit too bad. Hard to say, I mean... Mm.
The thing about Sulaco is... <laughs> I think Sulaco and Komachi are about as equally good, <laughs> so... <laughs> I would have to put Slaco here. <laughs> the people in the old days, there would be a list, there would be a tier below this which would be C, and then Sulaco would be there, but she's not there. She's definitely at least B. Okay, next character. Tenshi. Tenchi is another character that's been sliding over the years. In the old days, Tenchi was an easy shoe in for top 10, but she has definitely had her weaknesses more apparent in the last few years. People have been starting to um, really focus in on the fact that Tenchi's neutral is really hard to play around. You are really suffering in neutral against a lot of characters, especially the fast ones, where you just don't have an opportunity to press buttons against in a lot of situations because you just don't have good things to hit. Everything is just super committal and punishable, where it's like, you know, you have Almost as much jump A commitment as Komachi. Your jump A day is super commitment. Your J2A takes you to the floor. Your J6A leaves you a sitting duck. All of your B bullets have a lot of recovery before you can high jump. Her C bullets also have a lot of recovery before you can move. So it's like, if you aren't making consistently good decisions with Tenchi, you're going to get punished a lot. And you're going to get punished. You're going to really feel... Like, you can't- don't have options a lot of the time. And, like... The thing is... Despite all of that, Tenchi still has that X-Factor where... She does have the most high consistent damage in the game, where it's like... She doesn't need to guess right a lot of the time to win. Her pressure is solid, she forces a lot of border escapes, and she does have, you know, ways to do really strong Oki with her 623, I mean with her um, 214 Quake. She also has some pretty good meter. She has a really good 4 card that can checkmate you really early, if provided a weather is up. It's kind of like Gungner, but half is go but half Gungner. It's like, man, Tenchi is Tenchi's good. I really like Tenchi, but you know, after playing as Tenchi, I. I feel like the characters ha had a lot more weaknesses than I gave her credit initially. So, I want to say Tenchi is around here. I feel like the characters above her are a lot more well-rounded. Not as... Not as demanding.
<laughs> you think she's low A? Isn't that by definition B plus? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Tenchi's not bad. It's just that other characters are better, <laughs> easier, more consistent. Don't need to kill themselves to get good reward all the time. Putting Tenchi below Patchy is hilarious. What? Patchy is better than Tenchi. I don't think that's a. I don't think that's a debatable anymore. To me, at least. I guess I guess it is debatable if people are still talking about it, but I think Patchy Lee is better. Okay. Moving on. Oku, next character. Okay, so... Itsuho is very uh, polarizing character. You know, people used to say she was absolute garbage, but then people started playing her, and then people started lo stop kept losing to her. And honestly, I think it's at the point where you just can't call this character that bad anymore. <laughs> Even though, I mean, it's hard, you know, because. There are certain matchups in which Oku just fucking loses, and there's not much you can really do. <laughs> Where it's like, sometimes you just die with this character, and it feels terrible. But against other matchups, this character is a freaking menace. Like, Yomu matchup? Oku mat- Oku- Romilia matchup. Like, any character that has to get close to Oku for- or some reason, and you're just like, fuck, man. <laughs> you don't wanna- you don't wanna play anymore. <laughs> and on top of that, Oku has really strong meterless pressure if she can pull it off. She's got ridiculous damage if she can pull it off. She has really good meter- if she can pull it off, it's like everything about Oku has an asterisk on it. It's like it's really strong, provided it works. Provided you, provided the matchup lets or the opponent gives her an opportunity. Thing, uh, it's just some of the Oku's lows are just so low that. Sometimes he just looks unviable, you know? So it's hard to, like, put her above B+. Because the characters above B+, are just way more powerful and consistent. Goku is a candidate to go to B+. It's hard to say. I'll leave Oku here for now. This shit be top loader than bomb loaded. I mean, I haven't even. There's still three more characters left, which will round out the top a little bit more. Cause I am, I have high opinions of these last three characters. Okay, so first up, Yomu. You know, 
originally, I was... I wasn't really high on Yomu. I think... Though, I've been convinced over the years that this character is, like, really freaking cracked. <laughs> this character can play from far away. She has... One of the best zone breakers in this entire game. She can be wherever she wants at almost any moment. She has... A freaking broken jump A, which basically turns her into a hurt box. Uh, oh, I mean a hitbox. Super fast move that interrupts literally everything. She has great meterless pressure. She has ridiculous damage for how much effort, for how easy those hits are to get. Like, you can get a jump A and then convert it into like 4,000 plus with meter. Or 2.7, 2.8 without meter. It's kind of, kind of ridiculous how easily this character can get her damage in. Where it's to the point where, you know... It, I can't sleep on this character anymore. Yomu is just such a deceptively strong character. Deceptively strong. Where it's hard. She's like one or two things away from being A+. Plus. Like, she's extremely close. Like, Marisa or... Mei Ling, where it's just like, you know, she's almost there. But there's, it's like, this kit is just so much dumb shit in it, where it's like, it's not impossible to, where there's like, maybe there might be one day where she is an A-plus character. That's the thing, like. And Yomu. Oh, man. Is Yomu A tier now? I don't think. Yomu still lacks certain things. Doesn't really have crazy Oki or anything like that. Though she does have really good meter. Clones, SOE, color swords, all freaking godlike freaking cards. Okay, like Yobu is like high A. But I don't think she's good enough for A. But definitely here, at, 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 at least. Okay, I, th I think I'm okay with A for now. You know what? After I rank, after I put everyone in a tier, I'm gonna order them within the tiers. And then I'll be my ultimate tier list. <laughs> Yukari. 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 Yukari is... Really freaking strong. I used to think Yukari is like B+, but honestly, I think Yukari is way better than that. Well, not way better. Not like A+, plus tier, but Yukari is freaking strong. Like, holy shit. <laughs> she just invalidates a lot of sh 
things from characters. Like, neutral against Yukari can just legitimately be suffocating. Because she just dominates the screen. And you can't do much. You're just forced to try to go in. But Yukari is hard to go in on because she has such good... Fast backdash cancels in the air that she can always mix up when she's going to bullet again and when she's going to just bullet into jump A. Whereas it's like you just are always making a risk just moving it on Yukari. On top of that, she has ridiculous, ridiculous meterless pressure. She has one of the one of the best anti-airs in the game, so she's able to just invalidate approaches like that as well and then you know she's got ron which can always turn an eh string into a reset oh my gosh yukari is and yukari's got such good buttons 6a easily one of the best 6a's in the game like 3a one of the best 3a's in the game jump 8a ridiculous and air pressure strings because it just doesn't jerk her around in the air so she can do whatever the hell she wants with it. You know, her two-way reaches forever. She can do strings with like four or five two-ways that just feel unfair because no one else can do that much. And then she can always do that shit into 6A at any time. Where it's like, it's like on the level of Aya, really. It's just kind of Kind of dumb sometimes. You are, you know, you're, you're. You play you against the Yukari. It just, you know, sometimes against cer certain characters, she feels like she's got everything. But you know, she does have her limiting factors. You know, her conversion ability isn't very good sometimes. some Not every hit will convert into a knockdown, you know. She's also really big hitbox-wise. Her crouch doesn't make her that much shorter. She's susceptible to a lot more block strings than other characters. Oh yeah, but, oh yeah. <laughs> Can't forget about her broken Hangeki. <laughs> And so, Tower is really good. Definitely A tier material. Not good enough to break into A plus, but he's A. Does Yukari have any cheese stuff? She has Ron. She has Pinwheel. She has a two-way that can block swing into itself like eight times, even on Sawako. You think Yukari is A+. Dang, that's a, that's a pretty hot take. That, that's a spicy take. Yukari is A+. Dang, is it really time to just wake up and just admit that Yukari is top tier? Mm. Yomo and Yukari both an A+. Okay, I think Yomo and Yukari are definitely stronger than Mei Ling. This group of characters. Yomu and Yukari are definitely better than them. What are Yukari's flaws? Her hurt block size, her speed, her jump height. <laughs> it's a, that's a minor weakness, but it's it's a thing. Her wake up is on the slower side. She gets out of the corner, but it's really easy to chase it down.
Ugh, hard to say. Man, do I put Yomu and Yukari up here? I mean, my list is already top heavy because the lowest tier is B. The lowest tier is B. Okay, but I mean, you go. I mean, is there really any reason to talk about <laughs> any placement other than S for Yuyuko? Would anyone argue Yuko lower than S? That's the real question we should be talking about. Let's let's talk about why Yuko deserves S. Okay, I mean, where can we start? Okay. She's got ridiculous meter with ridiculous damage, ridiculous frame data, <laughs> ridiculous hitboxes. <laughs> It's so, so many good things about this kit, right? You have really, really good buttons like 2A, 6-6-A, jump 2-A, jump 6-A, jump 8-A. Just, but this, this character, when you get, she, when she's close to you, she just has so many ways to freaking hit you. And when she hits you, that shit fucking hurts. J2A meterless conversions are like 3,000 plus damage. And that move is ridiculously easy to hit with. It's one of the best jump ins in the game and it converts into a million damage. Just because you have a jump 8A, which is basically an anti air with how fast and big it is. Where it's like you try to approach Yuko from above. And then you get jump 8 aid CH, cause that shit is fast as fuck and hits everywhere. You have a J6A that catches jumps and dashes and like it hits everywhere. It's a J it's a move that literally hits everywhere. You have all of that and you have a character that can place these hitboxes really precisely with perfect flight. So she's not not only blessed with having great coverage on her angles, she can be really precise about where she wants to place those moves. It just makes them even scarier. On top of that, you've got great Great, great meter usage on this kit. You have one card and two card that can that can lay on the chip. One that continues pressure and makes stuff safe. Against characters with bad pokes, you can even reset with some sometimes. You have the four card time bomb, which is incredibly busted sometimes. Because, you know, you can just checkmate people. 
you lock them down, you hit them with the 4 card, keep them under pressure a little bit, and then they're just stuck there and you just let them take the 4k damage. Wow. Unblockable melee that you can't avoid unless you have character specific bullshit or a reversal. Oh, what's the song? Um, I'll post it in the chat. What I'm listening to right now. Oh yeah, did I did I mention 60? You you kill 60 is one of the most un well one of the most poorly thought out neutral tool buttons in this entire game, right? It's like a better version of certain skills. Like, there are skills that aren't as good as Yuko 6C. It just sits there and it just does... You can't get rid of it. You just literally can't get rid of it. You have to deal with it, it just sits there. Yuko can make stuff safe with it. She can just 6C and sit on top of it and then you're just like, fuck, I have to deal with this now. <laughs> it's so dumb. Is it denser than Slu... Then Swap goes 2 2? Yes! Because it doesn't interact! Doesn't matter! <laughs> you can't get rid of it! I made a 2012 tier list. Did anyone put Yu Yu Yukari in A plus tier in 2012? <laughs> I don't think anyone also put, um... <laughs> Tenchi in B plus in 2012 either. Tenchi was definitely A plus in 2012. I can make a 2012 tier list for you. <laughs> I know it off the top of my head. Mailing A tier is a pretty, pretty, pretty hot take. For 2012 also. Also, Cherno B plus. Cherno would be B. Also, Reimu, I've... Moved her a lot down than a than a 2012. <laughs> also, Aya was higher. Aya was used to be like A. <laughs> but yeah, man, you go kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of snasty, kind of snasty. Okay. Now that I've uh, preliminarily, pre preliminarily, well, whatever. I've placed everyone. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna look over shit and move shit around. I don't think I need to move anyone in or out of S tier. I think these three characters are the best three characters in the game. These characters below them are very good, but I don't think any of them have the sauce to move into S. <laughs> I don't... Like, I already talked about why I don't think Aya is S tier. I don't... Aya just does not have the ridiculously broken nonsense <laughs> that the characters above her have. She's more... She's more honest than Yuko, Raisin, or Iku. Is this ordered? I'm going to order it. So, A tier. Does anyone move in or out of A? A plus. Well, I don't think any of the characters in A-plus go down to S. Go up to S. Do I think any of these characters need to move down, though? I don't think so. I think that A-plus tier is about where I'd put these guys.
Now for A tier. Hmm. <laughs> People have really been bothering me about the Suica B plus pick. I I don't know. I'm just kind of low on Suica. I don't think she's that. <laughs> I don't think she's as good as the characters that are it that are currently in A. Like, she's definitely like high B plus. <laughs> or low A. People really think I that Cherno should go down, huh? Y'all wanna know my- You don't wanna know what I think? <laughs> Make Kawachi is better than these four characters. <laughs> Why Reimu below her? Yeah, you're right. Like, Reimu and Komachi are around the same level. Hmm, I don't know. Because I don't think Reimu is as bad as people say she is. I think a B plus is fair for Reimu. It's hard. I don't think Komachi is that much better than Reimu. <laughs> I think Komachi is as good as Oko. <laughs> because I saw Oku in B+, I'm like, Komachi is at least as good as Yoku. In my opinion. I was high on Cherno, I think I was overrating her a bit. Why did I put Cherno in B? Mm. I don't know. I feel like Cherno, Reimu, and Komachi are all around the same level of power. But do I, like, make more tears? <laughs> like... Make an A-minus tier, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A 
A minus. Get baby blue. Actually, that looks really weird as baby blue. to put Alice in A minus too if I get to make that tier. <laughs> what bothers me is I can't find a good color for this. Control question, how do you decide the difference between A plus A and A minus? Like, how big is the difference of crack due to this in it? I feel like the characters in the tier above just have, like, a slightly more, like, slightly more dirt, slightly more, um, more, their stronger aspects are stronger, and their weaker aspects are less weak. up to A minus. <laughs> these characters back where they were. <clears throat> I do think that B plus tier is kind of crowded. I... Because... I do think that Suika and Tenchi are better... Then Reimu, Komachi, Cherno, this level of character. But I don't know if Oku is on the same level of these guys. But I don't think Oku to Komachi is that big of a gap. I'm also tempted to move Alice to the tier above. Because I think Alice is deserving, but it's hard. I don't think Goku is stronger than Alice either. Alice is definitely at least this good. We're really making small tier differences now. If Oku goes up, Alice has to as well. I think Alice is better than Oku. I think that I think Alice being an A minus and Oku being B plus is fair.
I think Yomu and Yukari are around the same level. I don't want to move them without moving the other. Alice is better than Oku. Defo. Yukari over Yomu. I think Yomu and Yukari are the same level. Either they're both A plus or they're both A. <laughs> If there was a tier between here and here, Yomu and Yukari would be in it alone. But I'm running out of letters. <laughs> We're getting too granular. <laughs> If this is actual A, then we do this, right? And then these guys are A minus, these guys are B plus, these guys are B, and then these guys are B minus. There's no S plus in this game. I went from five tiers to, <laughs> to seven tiers. <laughs> Though the tier list does look a lot better like this. <laughs> Yukari on the same level as Saki and Remy? Nah, not in my opinion. S means super. <laughs> Superb. I think Patchy being one slight level above Suika makes sense. Suika could easily be an A minus, but I like the B plus rating a little bit better. I think because I put Patchy, Marisa, and Mailing on the same level, and I don't think Suika's at that level, but she's still like solid. Lost word level of hearing. <laughs> I, I'm done making new tiers. I'm satisfied with this. <laughs> hey, man. I think you're underrating Alice and Tenchi when you say that Suika's not on that level. <laughs> I'm just not convinced on Suika. <laughs> I'm not convinced on Suika. I am I'm pretty content with this T 
tier placement. I want to move some characters along. I want order within tiers. I would do that, and then I would do this. I don't know. Yomu. These characters are about equal. <laughs> I would be okay with either placement. For this tier, I would do this. This tier, I would do that. Keep that alone. I don't think that's lock was better than Sane. Oh no. If I would put <laughs> Hard to say what I think I think the best character in the game Oh my gosh. I want to say it's Iku. I want to say Iku is the best. <laughs> It's hard though between Yuko and Iku. Like they're undis. It's easy. It's like they're number one and number two. But which one I'd say number one? It like depends on the time. Like the it depends on the day of the week. They're so close. <laughs> Can I put an equal sign here? Oh, it's so hard. I don't know. I can't I can't decide on who's better between these two. <laughs> Okay, I'm convinced. Yuko number one. Iku number two. Close second. Race in third. Then Salkia. Then Remy. Then Aya. Then Yukari. Then Yomu. Then Marisa. Mei Ling. Hatchuli. Then Suika. Tenshi. Alice. Then Oku. Komachi. Cherno. Reimu. Then, so then Swako. Then Sanai. These house set albums are freaking hot. I love these. <laughs> huh. I think I'm con I think I'm content with this. Yeah, this is my tier list. <laughs> this is my opinion in the year of our Lord 2022. <laughs> what I think about the placement of the 20 characters in Hizo Tensuku. Mei Lang better than Patchouli? Yes. Mailing is top 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, she's top 10. <laughs> is Akuya and Remy above Aya? I definitely think so. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna save this guy.
Yeah, and I... That's kind of what it's gotta be. I think this is it. This is my tier list. Remy Aya. Dude, if I if I do a matchup chart, I'm gonna be so freaking I'll be here forever. Okay, uh, well, yeah, uh, thanks for uh, watching. It's getting kind of late. Took me two hours to do this. For good reason, there's a lot of things to discuss. Just goes to show how close the characters are in this game. You know, it's... I have B- as the lowest tier now. Have I done a Komachi matchup chart? I think I did have done I've done one before. But uh yeah, I might do another tier list stream and uh, do a Komachi matchups. Okay, well, yeah, that's my tier list. I'm gonna post it to his Soten and I'll see how much everyone dunks on it. But yeah, this is what I think of Soku this year. Maybe next year things will change. We'll see. Later.